Woodland owners commonly cite wildlife as a top reason why they own property. The challenge is, is that wildlife, and particularly white-tailed deer, can damage young trees where it causes issues with their growth and survival. So in today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit about deer and the type of damage they do, but more importantly, what landowners can do to help mitigate that damage. So white-tailed deer cause damage to trees, and particularly young trees, by feeding on young twigs and the buds on trees. The other way deer can damage young trees is uh, by bucks rubbing their antlers up against the main stem. So the good news for landowners is there's things we can do to control white-tailed deer damage to young trees. The method that you choose will really depend on a couple different factors, including uh, what type of equipment uh, you have available to you, uh, how much money you're willing to spend, and how much time you're willing to invest in the process. Just to show you the kind of damage white-tailed deer can do, you can see these two fields in front of us. The tree planting on the right was planted at the same time as the left. The only difference you're seeing is the field on the right didn't use any fencing or any other methods to deter white-tailed deer. Electric fencing is a common method we use to deter white-tailed deer browsing of young seedlings. The cost of your fence is really gonna depend on the setup, how many strands you have, and the size of the area that you're gonna protect. You're gonna be more efficient protecting blocks and large blocks. For large blocks, your cost is gonna be more because you've got more fencing, but the cost per unit acre actually decreases the larger area you protect. The basic components of the fence include the posts, which are typically fiberglass rods, the wire, which can be a bare wire, it could be a poly wire or a poly tape, and then the charging source. For this particular fence, this is a single strand poly wire electric fence. It's designed for white-tailed deer, and so our strand is 30 to 36 inches above ground. Typically with these types of fences, we will also bait them. Deer can jump 30 to 36 inches, no problem. And so while we call these fences, they're actually more of a frightening device. So the idea is if we bait these fences, deer will walk up, lick the bait, turn around, run away. There's a couple options you can use. A lot of manufacturers will have bait cups, metal bait cups with some type of a, a polyfill in there that you can add a lure to. Or you can use the old standby, which is a simply peanut butter with a little bit of aluminum foil that's folded over the wire. A couple tips uh, to remember when you're using electric fences is you want to keep the ground below and on either side of the fence clear of vegetation to as much as possible. You want deer to be able to see the fence and not be surprised when they come up to it. The other thing you want to do is you want to scout the perimeter on a regular basis. You can have a limb or something like that fall, and if that happens and deer have access to that planting, then you're in trouble because they know they can get in there, they know they have food, and so you want to continually scout that perimeter, make any necessary repairs you need to make as soon as possible, and then also do regular mowing and trimming around the fence. So you have a choice with this in terms of where it's applied. In most places, we use electric fences on regular tree plantations that are in a relatively open area. It's gonna be more of a challenge to use this method in areas where you've got a lot of tall, mature trees because you'll have branches and limbs fall down. So unless you're out there looking at that fence almost on a daily basis, they're really not gonna be very effective in a woodland situation. Of course, the other situation you're gonna have with that is the charger's not gonna be in full sun probably, and so it's not gonna get an adequate charge to function properly. A seven foot woven plastic mesh fence is another way to protect plantations from deer. These fences can be used in any size area. The larger the fence, the more expensive it's gonna be because more material, more labor to install it. To find out more detail on how to install these fences, visit the link to the publication in the video description below. The basic construction is you use metal or wood uh, posts as the framework to lay out the fence, and then you attach the woven mesh plastic to the fence, as well as string it along wire from the top and the bottom of the fence. Uh, we also typically will put flagging halfway between each pole. This allows the deer to actually see the fence so they don't run into it, which can sometimes be a problem. There's also a J stake uh, located between each pole that affixes the fence to the ground. You definitely don't want any gaps in the bottom of this fence because deer actually are just as likely to crawl under a fence as they are to jump over it. In terms of maintenance, maintenance of these fences is actually quite easy. Uh, typical to other fences, you want to scout the perimeter on a continual basis. You can have uh, limbs fall on this, and so you have to remove those and make any repairs as necessary. The other thing you got to look for is, is the bottom of the fence. You're going to have to look for rabbits chewing through the fence. And so even though you'd think this mesh can keep them out, well, certainly the size will keep a rabbit out. This plastic, they can easily chew through that. And so rabbits will chew holes through that, and then deer can actually access those holes uh, uh, accordingly. Uh, you can actually fix those by taking a small sheet of the, the mesh fence and affixing it over that hole using zip ties and so it's a really quick and easy repair to make. 
Single trees can be protected with welded wire cages five to seven feet tall. Now the way these cages work, it prevents deer from browsing on most of the tree and it also prevents deer from rubbing their antlers up against the tree which can actually kill it when they're young. So the way you assemble these is you cut a section of fencing and you tie the ends together using zip ties or wire and then you affix it to one or two stakes again using zip ties or wire. So it's really easy to assemble. So what we're doing here is we're trying to protect the terminal bud. As the tree gets older and grows taller, the terminal buds exceed the reach of a deer and this tree will be good to go. You can also see with this tree is that some of the lateral branches are already sticking out from the side of this cage. And that's okay, a little bit of light browsing on those lateral branches really won't affect the growth and survival of this tree. We want this tree to grow straight and tall, so from that respect, it's really not bad at all. So I'm standing in a bottomland conservation hardwood tree planting, and what you're seeing behind me is each individual tree protected by a tree tube or a tree shelter. Those terms are generally used interchangeably. There's many different designs of tree tubes. This one right here is four feet tall. That's pretty typical for tree tubes. Occasionally they'll be taller. Some of them are solid. This particular model here is ventilated. It has holes in there and that allows airflow uh, to kind of prevent things from getting too moist uh, inside the tube. This one is also fitted with a ventilated mesh cap. And so these just slide over kind of like a sock on a foot and that tree will grow up right through there. And what these do is they prevent wasps and birds from getting inside there, which you don't really want. In terms of installation, what happens is sometimes these are already form-fitted round like this, but most of the time you buy tree tubes and they're, they're flat. And so you've got to roll them up and then attach them to some type of a stake. This particular stake is a wooden stake. Some people also use a PVC stake. Uh, regardless of the type though, uh, you have the state close to the seedling, you slide the tube over the seedling and you put zip ties through the holes of the tube as well as around that stake and that holds it. So these are uh, used not only to help the tree growth but also to prevent wildlife damage. For deer, obviously when the tree is small, uh, it's going to be below the height of this tube. It prevents any kind of access to it. So it prevents deer from browsing on those seedlings. Uh, certainly once it grows above the height of the tube, deer can access it. And so that's why the, some people choose the five foot tube if they're really concerned about deer browse because it gives it another foot growth before it comes out of that tube. Another benefit of the tree tube is it prevents uh, bucks from rubbing their antlers on these trees. And so as trees are older, their bark thickens and they can withstand some rub damage. But when trees are young like this, their bark is very thin. And so bucks can actually kill trees just from rubbing their antlers on the individual tree. Chemical repellents are another option landowners can use to deter white tail deer damage to young trees. There's basically two types of repellents. There's area repellents, so you're trying to spray kind of an area and keep animals out of that area. Or there's taste repellents where you're trying to prevent an animal from tasting or, or browsing on a specific part of a plant. Our recommendation to landowners is try and find out what works for you. You might want to talk to neighbors or others in your area to see what works for them as well. Because really it depends on what the habitat is around, how large of an area you're protecting, what other food sources do they have available, and, and so on and so forth, and quite frankly, the number of deer you have. So which method is best for you? Each wildlife damage management practice has its own advantages and disadvantages, and those can vary by location, so you're gonna to have to figure out which works best for your situation. Usually combining different methods increases success. So sometimes you wanna combine different methods that target different species, for example, you can use tree tubes in combination with either welded wire cages or electric fencing. Other times you'll want to stack different methods that target the same species. So for example with white-tailed deer you can use deer repellents, deer hunting, and deer fencing all in the same area. A professional forester can make suggestions for you and also provide a cost-benefit analysis to help you figure out which is right for your situation. For help in finding a forester near you or more information about wildlife damage management, see the links in the video description below.